Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and reviews show, where this week we're taking a look at some of our favourite new releases. We have the latest hot hatch from Mini, the John Cooper Works GP, a hardcore version of the regular JCW. Can this little pocket rocket really compete against the mighty Honda Civic Type R? Plus, with a new electric vehicle from Volkswagen, and no, it's not the ID3. Instead, the German manufacturer has electrified the Up City car. Also on the way, the latest family supercar slayer from Audi, the all new RS6, as well as a camper van from Mercedes. First, though. When Alfa Romeo launched the Giulia and Stelvio a few years back, it represented the start of a new era for the famous Italian brand. Both cars have rightly been well received, both by critics and customers. However, while their styling and performance might still be class leading, up until now the interiors never quite felt up to scratch. Now though, Alfa has addressed this with some updates for 2020. Both models now get a greatly improved infotainment system with simpler interfaces and some new features. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto now come as standard, while you can operate the system via the iDrive-like rotary switch or the touchscreen. Fit and finish has also been improved. Both cars' centre consoles look much more upmarket, and they now get a more modern, digitalised instrument cluster. More autonomous safety tech has been added too, with lane-sensing cruise control and plenty of other features to keep them competitive against their German rivals. Twenty twenty sees the twenty year anniversary of the BMW Mini Cooper. Now in its third generation, this little hatchback has become an icon in its own right. And it's almost two decades since the first John Cooper Works badge was stamped on the back of a new Mini when JCW was still an independent company. Since 2008, BMW has owned JCW and in this period the Bavarian make has brought out various hardcore models. The GPs represent the most a Mini can be and now there's a new one. It's called the Mini JCW GP, and it's the fastest and most powerful production Mini ever built. How, may you ask? Well, the JCW GP hits the dyno at 306 brake horsepower, all from a 2-litre turbocharged petrol engine. That's 75 more horses than the standard JCW, thanks to plenty of new engineering wizardry. Add to this model specific sports exhausts, 8 speed Steptronic sports transmission, sports brakes, and a new chassis setup, which puts it 10 millimeters lower, and you have one mad mini. And if you hadn't noticed, the JCW GP also features some special front and rear aprons, a roof spoiler with double wing contour, and flared carbon wheel arch covers that protrude from the bodywork like some sort of 80s racing car. Inside, there are two seats, a steering wheel with paddles, and a roll cage, but that's about it. Put it all together, and the JCW GP goes from 0 to 60 in a tad over 5 seconds, and to a top speed of 165 miles per hour. It has, reportedly, gone around the Nürburgring in less than 8 minutes, too. So if the JCW GP is quick, stylish, and race-ready, how does it compare to the Honda Civic Type R and Renault Megane RS Trophy? We've pitted the Civic and the Megane against each other before, with the Civic coming out on top. But can the Mini take the crown? From a styling standpoint, the Mini is just as ludicrous as the Honda. It's not quite as sleek as a Megane or Golf GTI, but we think hot hatches should look a bit crazy. But while the Mini may have the Civic matched for bonkers styling, inside it's a win for the Honda. Terrible infotainment aside, we love the red seats and modern look. The build quality is excellent, there's room for four adults. The boot is plenty big enough though, but the rear wing does hamper rearward visibility. 
out on the road though, the Civic is still a stunning car to drive. The power delivery is rapid throughout the rev range and it feels quicker than a Megane RS or Golf GTI. It's sharper too, with what must be the cleverest differential in the class. The ride is very hard, but you forgive it when you go out for a drive because the chassis is sensational. In a game of top trumps, the Mini won't win you many hands. Its power and top speed put it second, 10 bhp down and 4 miles per hour slower than the Type R. It's pricier too, but that's unlikely to put off the Mini aficionados who will be queuing out of dealerships to get their names on the waiting list for one of the 3,000 being built. And if we're honest, we can't blame them. This is one of the most exciting looking hot hatches we've ever seen. And 300 horsepower in a Mini is guaranteed to be a riot. When you picture a Mercedes, it's unlikely that the first thing you'll think of is a van. It's easy to forget that commercial vehicles have long been a huge part of the brand's success. But what do you get if you combine the luxuries of an S-Class with the practicality of a van? Well, you get this, the V-Class. Based on the Vito, it's easy at first to dismiss the V-Class as just a minibus with tinted windows. But dig a little deeper and it soon becomes clear why these are now such common sights in airport drop-off zones. Available with either a short, long or extra long wheelbase, the V-Class offers a whole new take on the limo. Shorter cars get seven seats, while longer ones are available with eight. There are three trim levels on offer, topped off by the pricey exclusive model. All versions get plenty of creature comforts though, with the mid-range AMG line offering the best bang for your buck. From the outside, while it is still obviously a van, it's noticeably more upmarket than a regular Vito. For starters, it gets body-coloured bumpers, alloy wheels and some dark tinted windows. But it's inside where things start to get a bit special. Up front, the dashboard follows the same design language as other Mercedes passenger cars, with stylish swoopy lines and a big infotainment screen. And while it's easy to find one or two bits of scratchy plastic, on the whole, the materials on show are the same as you'll find in the rest of the Merc range. That means soft leathers, cool aluminium and the signature turbine air vents. But we'll hazard a guess that you're far more likely to find yourself in the back, and that's where things get really impressive. Each seat is electrically adjustable via a panel in the armrest with even the short wheelbase models offering as much legroom as you'd expect from a converted van. Better yet, each seat is cooled and heated and available with an excellent massage function with different speeds and settings for you to enjoy as you recline back and enjoy the view from the full-length panoramic roof. It's exceptionally comfortable, especially in the longer versions where the ride is just that little bit more refined. Which brings us neatly onto the way it drives. Refinement is the main goal of the V-Class, but as it's essentially a van, it's perhaps not surprising that this is a long way from driving like a saloon car. In fact, while it may be trimmed like an S-Class, out on the road there's no disguising its Vito roots. Throw it into a corner at any sort of speed and the van's bulk becomes immediately apparent. While the body control is decent enough, the steering is light and uncommunicative giving you no real sense of what the front wheels are up to. Apart from this minor criticism though, it's hard to think of a better way to chauffeur several people at once. But despite all its luxuries and charm, this isn't our favorite version of the V-Class. That accolade goes to this, the Marco Polo. Aimed to take on Volkswagen's California camper vans, the Marco Polo is basically the motorized version of glamping. It gets all the usual camper van bits like a cooker and swilling front seats. But that's where the familiarities stop. Like the V-Class bus, all of the touch points are remarkably high-end with lots of wood, chrome and leather throughout the cabin. Everything is electric, including the rear seats and the pop-top roof. We're not quite sure how this could fit in at a festival, but as a road trip wagon, few things come close. However, Volkswagen has responded. 
the new Multivan 6.1 will be available as a California campervan or in MPV form as the Caravelle. And while it's unlikely that you'll be able to spec massaging rear seats, it guarantees to be about the most practical thing on four wheels. It looks the part too, with some fancy new paint options and a much more modern look, outside and in. Better yet, there'll be an electric version too. For sheer class though, the Mercedes is in a league of its own. No other van-based MPV offers anywhere near the levels of luxury you get in the V-Class. It's quiet, refined and fantastically comfortable. Sure, it's not the nicest thing to drive, but that surely doesn't matter. And if a tent simply won't do for your next adventure, the Marco Polo is as glam as camping gets. Coming up, the latest electric Volkswagen and the monstrous Audi RS6. Still to come, the all-new Audi RS6, but first... The Volkswagen Up and its city cars, the Seat Me and Skoda Citygo, have been on sale for many years and with profit margins on small cars shrinking, their future is in question. However, the German manufacturer has continued development with the fabulous UP GTI. And now this, an all-electric version to rival the Renault Zoe. Called the E-UP, it doesn't get an ID name like Volkswagen's other new electric vehicles because it doesn't use the brand's new modular car platform known as MEB. Instead, it uses a modified combustion engine platform like the old model. The range is now shot up to 162 miles thanks to its new denser battery, which is impressive especially as this is a car that may spend most of its time silently nipping around city centres. The old model could only manage about 120 miles, and that was only if you promised not to use the air con. Usefully, it can reach 80% power in an hour with a fast charger, meaning longer journeys should easily be achievable if the decision is made to venture out of town. Driving the E-Up is the same 61 kilowatt electric motor as before, producing 81 brake horsepower, which is more than you have in a regular petrol up. The 0-62 time has dropped by half a second to 11.9, although the 81 mile an hour top speed remains unchanged. What it lacks in speed, it makes up for in equipment. DAB radio and Bluetooth are fitted as standard, along with lane departure warning and automatic air conditioning. In an effort to keep costs down, there's no infotainment screen. Instead, a smartphone cradle, which allows use of a mobile phone as a sat-nav and makes use of the Volkswagen Maps and More app. Essentially, though, the rest of the car hasn't changed too much. It has a few extra airbags and some new colour options, and that's about it. But like any up, it's a great place to be. Visibility throughout is excellent, and all four wheels push right out to the corners means it's fun to drive too. It has adjustable regenerative braking to help recover energy as well as two separate eco driving modes to help eke out as many miles as possible. But as we know, the little up doesn't have the small EV market all to itself. The Set Me Electric shares everything but the badges with the up, as does the latest battery powered Skoda CityGo. And there's competition from outside the VW Group 2. The Renault Zoe may be getting on a bit, but it has a fresh new look with LED headlights, a revised grille and renewed bumpers. It's a subtle update, but an effective one nonetheless. Inside, the changes are much more obvious due to a completely restyled centre console and new infotainment. The upholstery is made of eco-friendly recycled materials while many of the old, scratchy plastics have been replaced with nicer, soft-touch bits. Like the ear, the Zoe has been boosted due to a bigger battery. As a result, the range is seriously impressive for a car of this size, 245 miles if you spec it correctly. 
There are two powertrain options with either 106 or 132 brake horsepower. The latter can take the little Zoe from 0 to 62 miles an hour in nine and a half seconds with a top speed of 87. And then there's this, the all new Corsa E. The Opel and Vauxhall Corsa has long been one of Europe's best selling cars and one of the least interesting. Now with its fresh design and Peugeot platform, it's as stylish as any of its rivals, especially the electric version. Put it into eco mode and you can have up to 270 miles from a single charge. While inside, it gets a proper infotainment system and countless bits of safety tech. But while the Zoe and Corsa are perhaps more impressive and capable cars than the little Volkswagen, they're bigger and more expensive. The EO and its VW Group stablemate still occupy a unique segment of the market, one which should keep the city car alive. This is the new Audi RS6, and we think it's fair to say that it's no ordinary estate car. But you knew that already. Just from its wide arches, immense grille, and enormous alloys. Old RS6s may have been sleepers, but this one is loud and proud. It's 80 millimeters wider than a standard car, while the 22-inch alloys show off the biggest brakes ever fitted to an Audi production car. In short, the RS6 is fast, and it wants everyone to know about it. In fact, the only panels it shares with the regular A6 Avant are the roof, the front doors, and the bootleg. Under the bonnet, you'll find a 4-litre bi-turbo V8, putting out 592 brake horsepower and a staggering 590 pound-feet of torque. 0 to 62 is dealt with in just 3.6 seconds, making it a match for many modern supercars. Top speed is limited to 155, but for an extra bit of cash, Audi will take away the limiter, letting you and your family hit 189 miles per hour. But look closely, and that isn't all that surprising. All that torque is fed through an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, driving all four wheels. There's a very clever sport differential divvying it all up between the fronts and rears, meaning there's always going to be plenty of grip. As you gain speed, the optional air suspension automatically lowers the car, helping to keep it flat in the corners. It sounds like an absolute animal then, but Audi insists that this is still a usable, everyday family car. For starters, this is actually a hybrid, sort of. It uses the familiar 48-volt mild hybrid setup that we've seen in other big Audis, allowing for quieter stop-starts and better fuel economy. To further improve that, the RS6 also features cylinder deactivation, allowing half of the cylinders to shut down when cruising. Despite all that though, this is still a very thirsty car. The WLTP economy figure is just over 22 miles per gallon. Small price to pay though, right? Inside it's just as impressive, if a little more conventional. There are a few fancy RS bits like the sports seats trimmed in Napa leather and Alcantara and a special steering wheel with aluminium gear shift paddles. But it's otherwise a standard A6 cabin and that's no bad thing. The build quality is second to none and there's easily enough space for four adults to travel comfortably, along with all their luggage and a massive boot. One special little detail we love though is the infotainment. It appears to be the same unit you get in a regular car. But this one also features some RS-specific features like temperature readouts and even a G-meter. However, the RS6 doesn't have the fast luxury estate market to itself. This is the Mercedes AMG E63. A subtler, more demure alternative to the Hulk-like Audi. Like the RS6, it uses a twin-turbocharged V8 and all-wheel drive. It produces 604 brake horsepower and hits 62 miles per hour from rest in 3.4 seconds, making it marginally quicker than the big Audi. But if you're worried that the addition of the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system is going to ruin the traditional AMG tail-happy fun, fear not. 
as it's the only estate car we can think of that comes with a drift mode. This effectively disconnects all drive to the front wheels, turning it into a proper rear-driven tyre slayer. It's more of a driver's car than the Audi then, but can it compete for day-to-day -day usability? Well, the interior is just as plush, making use of all the usual E-Class luxuries. It gets a few special AMG-specific bits, but the dashboard remains as beautifully sculpted as ever. We much prefer Audi's infotainment, though, and the RS6 somehow seems just a little bit more modern and contemporary. But for all the Merc's understated styling, put your foot down and heads will turn. It sounds incredible, with plenty of pops and crackles as well as its old-school V8 roar. But for our money, we take the Audi. The gorgeous interior is deeply appealing, while the aggressive styling is guaranteed to clear your lane on the Autobahn. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we take a look at a new performance SUV from Audi, the 600 horsepower RS Q8. And we'll be bringing you all the latest from the 2020 Singapore Motor Show.